after you guys won game one in Memphis, you guys all said they're going to come at us with physicality. You just know that's going to be the reaction. After game one with Dallas, do you expect the same sort of reaction from, from them? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, anytime you beat a team in the playoffs, that's always going to be the number one adjustment is just raising the level of physicality. So, yeah, we expect it. When early there were three for 19 in the first quarter from three, and it looked like they had a lot of good open looks. Was that defensive breakdowns or was that part of the – the strategy to see if they can make shots? Uh, I mean, ultimately, a team like that's going to get some open shots. Uh, you know, they have a guy who draws a lot of attention, um, a couple guys who can draw a lot of attention, and, and they got a bunch of shooters. So that's the way their offense is designed. You're not going to completely take that away. Like, you have to try to make the shots tough as you can, and hopefully the ones that you you, you can make tough can affect the ones that they get open. But that's that's the way their team is built. So, you know, you don't – everybody knew they were built that way. Like, you just – you don't just get to the Western Conference Finals um, not being elite at what you do. And they, they are elite at what they do. They create open shots, and, and they knock them down. They, they missed them last night. Uh, we got to do a better job defensively of not giving up so many open ones. But, I mean, that's what they do, and they're, and they're good at it. Draymond, Steve the other day said when you look to score, he sees victory. When you're obviously facilitating and defense are, are, you know, really big staples of your game, is there like a flip or a switch you flip kind of when you say, okay, this game I am going to really look to score versus when you maybe pass up more open looks to pass out to someone else? Oh, uh, yeah, there are games where I go in and say I'm going to be super aggressive and, um, and others where I don't feel I need to be. And, you know, um, but when I feel I need to be aggressive, I get aggressive. What's the what's the deciding factor in I'm going to be aggressive? Uh, it just sometimes depends on how a team is guard me. Uh, you know, if they're playing way off, if they're trying to cheat into the, my passing lanes and stuff, um, just break them down a little bit, make them pay for it. But, uh you know, I usually decide based off of how a team is guarded. Raymond, Eddie over here asked Steve a little bit ago just if he expects this this series to get testier, nastier. And Steve said, yes, absolutely. I mean, this is playing for high stakes right now. I mean, you ride on those emotions um, for your game. Do you, do you kind of agree that, that things will go up or not? I think it'll get – a lot more physical, but I don't think testy or nasty because we're not a testy or nasty team and they're not a testy or nasty team. Uh, will it get more physical? Of course. It's the Western Conference Finals. It's going to be physical. But I can't foresee it getting testy and nasty. That's just not the way these two teams are built or, you know, we don't. Memphis is a testy team. They're a nasty team. That's their MO, you know. Um, what they call it? Grind City or Grind, or grind House or Grind something or Something like that, like that's who they are. Um, that's not who Dallas is, and that's not who we are. So I don't expect it to get testy and nasty, but it will be physical. And, it was and physical how, last night. And how much did Steph setting the tone on the rebounding matter to you guys to get out and get some transition opportunities? Well, it's always um, great when you can get your guards rebounding. Uh, when that guard is Steph, it's incredible because – the break just goes right away. And so he was absolutely incredible on the boards last night. Uh, you know, we always speak about Steph being a great rebounder. Um, he's an incredible rebounder. And, I mean, that's that's hard to guard in transition when he gets the ball and just take off. So whenever he's rebounding like that and then pushing, that's good for us. Finney Smith, I'm sure he's not alone among NBA players, but Finney Smith likes shooting threes in front of the opposing bench. And, turning and saying something or motioning uh, last night, you kind of flipped the switch, uh, flipped the script and blocked his three pointer right in front of the Dallas bench. I wonder what kind of, you know, message that sends from a defensive standpoint. Oh, just that we're not going to give up anything easy. Um, I didn't really know about the whole in front of other teams bench and say something. I feel like, I feel like most guys say something when they hit a team three in front of the bench because when you shoot a three in front of the bench, everybody from the opposing team yells something. And so it's kind of a natural reaction for guys to turn around and say something. 
Um, so I didn't really know anything about that or make anything of it more so than that. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I felt really good about that play because I closed a lot of space. And so I was just excited about the play. I didn't really think I was, like, sticking it to them or anything like that. Like, it's just a fun play to make. Draymond, um, hi. Uh, Clay, Clay Thompson talked yesterday about, you know, he's still working to get back to pre-injury Clay. Um, and he obviously has overcome two very serious injuries and missed significant time. But I'm just curious on what ha- you've thought about him and how far he's come and where he's at, you know, in terms of getting back to 2019. Uh, I think he's absolutely amazing. Um, I think from where he's come from January 9th to today is incredible. Uh, being able to compete at this level and do it at, you know, after what he's gone through is amazing. I've been seeing these narratives about like, oh, Clay Thompson is Clay Thompson that, and he hasn't hit shots at the rate that he hit shots. But it further shows me how people don't know basketball because I've been seeing these narratives like Clay's playing bad, and I actually be leaving the game like, man, he's playing really good basketball. And so, um, yeah, it really just goes to show me how people can only identify if you're making or missing a shot. Because the game he's been playing on the floor and impact and winning has been the same clay I've always been battled with in the playoffs. So I think it's uh, I think it's pretty funny the narrative around, uh, and I hope he don't believe that narrative. And it kind of sounds like he does to say, "Oh, I'm still working to get back." No, the hell he not. He back. You miss and make shots all the time. I seen him. Y- y'all remember that shooting some clay hat where it was ridiculous. I don't even remember what it was, but it was pathetic. And maybe he broke out of it with like sixty or something like that. Was was he working his way back then? Or was he just in the shooting slump? And now are we going to say, oh, man, he's still working his way back? No, get that man his credit and what he's doing on the basketball floor. He's playing incredible basketball. Um, if I have one complaint, it's always that we can get you any easy shot you want, and you don't have to take a tough shot. But that's Clay Thompson. He's going to take tough shots, and he's going to make some tough shots, and you got to live with that. Um, So, yeah, uh, people every day just further proves how they don't know basketball. And it's pretty – I get a kick out of it. Following up on that, what have you seen from Clay's defense? Because he was such an established two-way player before his injuries. I thought his defense has been really good. I think when he's picked up guys that he need to pick up, he's guarded them well. Um, I I thought, you know, if you look at any series, you know, he – Went and made it hard on Monte Morris when Monte Morris was getting off. Nobody wanted to speak on that. Um, <clears throat> when Steph wasn't on Desmond Bain, it was Clay. Nobody wanted to speak about that. Uh, when it wasn't Wiggins last night, it was Clay. Nobody's going to speak about that. So I think uh, his defense has been pretty good. Is he playing the same defense? You know, our, our game plan against Memphis was to pick up Ja lower, as everyone could see, you know. You know, the one person we had a problem with doing it is Clay, because he runs out there and pick a guy up. That's how he defends. And so this whole notion, I, again, maybe I'm watching a different game, but the game I've been watching, he's been defending well. He's been rebounding well. He's been boxing out. He's been doing all the little stuff that non-basketball watchers or readers or analysts or whatever you want to call the people that make this stuff up um, can't see. And I'll trust and believe I know people can't see it because apparently I still suck. So (laughs) I know what people can't see. And the things that he's doing, I'm 1,000% certain people don't see it. I've been certain of that for 10 years now. And it actually is getting worse. It's not getting better. The amount of people that think they know the game of basketball is crazy. And these notions further prove that for me.
Dream it's been on. great because I continue to laugh at it. It's a really good thing. Dream on, you've had an opportunity to see Steve Kerr do this for a long time. But what is it like as a player to watch the chess match between him and opposing coach, whether it's Jason Kidd or anybody else? It's fun to go to battle with him because very rarely does he fail. Um, very rarely do I go into a game thinking he didn't give us an amazing game plan. Um, and so the confidence that he has around this time of year is incredible. And you feed off of it. Like, you know, going in, like, he feels confident about our game plan. And so you feel confident about the game plan. And then you go play hard and you execute it. Um, incredible. He's been an incredible coach to play for in these situations. Because he, like, he prepares a – I mean, he, including our coaches, that they prepare us for – Everything like I, I can't recall a game that we go into and I'm prepared. It feels a lot like I felt at Michigan State, where there was not going to be a team that came into a game With more prepared, more prepared than us, especially not in the NCAA tournament. And um, that's how I feel with Steve. Within that space, how do you evaluate what you guys did against Luca, and how does that evolve through the season, through the series necessarily? Because they're going to make adjustments. You guys have to as well. Yeah, they'll make adjustments. Um, as as everyone does, we have some adjustments that we are making. Um, but I thought, you know, that was a good game plan and it was great execution. None of it works without the other. Uh, you can go execute a garbage game plan, you're going to lose. And you can go not execute a great game plan and you're going to lose. So, uh, no, neither of them works without the other. I thought the game plan was incredible. I thought Wiggins' relentlessness was great. Um, I thought our help side defense was really good. I thought we put it we put it together for the most part on the defensive end. But it all starts with the game plan. Draymond, given your earlier comment about shots in front of the bench, what's the most clever, repeatable comment either you've made or someone else has made in that situation? Uh, mine ain't so repeatable. <laughs> yeah, mine ain't that repeatable. Mine is filled with a bunch of F-bombs and other words that I won't say. So I can't really give you any of mine. Uh, what other guys say, I don't really be trying to hear it. Because as soon as somebody turns and say something, I got a lot to say. So... I really don't really I really don't be caring what they say. Because if you turn and you say something, you're never hearing the end of it. So I don't really care what they say. If you say something, you gotta stand on that forever. So I don't know what they say. Right. Draymond, random question. In the playoffs, the emotions get heightened, obviously. On, off the court and uh, especially off the court, maybe. How do you, what do you do to, to get away from that, to kind of chill out, whatever you want to call it, distance yourself? I, I don't get away from it. I, I live that every day of the playoffs. So after the playoffs, I'll be exhausted and emotionally and mentally drained, even more so than physically, because I don't try to get away from it. I may take a day every blue moon in the playoffs to try to say, all right, I'm getting away from it. But you got to live this. You got to feel it. You got to breathe it. Like, you can't you can't get away from this. If you get away from this during the playoffs, you, you're losing your mojo. Like, you, you're not going to win if you're trying to get away from this. This is everything you got to have to go into this if you try to win a championship. So I don't really get away from it. Uh, you know, and... My family feel that. My friends feel that. Everybody around me feel that. I don't get away from it. What am, what am I trying to get away from? A championship? It's enough guys running away from that. I, I don't need to join that group. Um, so uh, I, I, I live and breathe that stress every day, all day. Like, <clears throat> I don't go home right now after this and feel like, oh, man, I'm free. Like, nah, I'm doing something to prepare for tomorrow all day till I go to bed. Cause that's how you, that's how you, 
that's how you have to win championships. You got to stay in it. If you can't stay in it, you don't deserve to win. You won't win. Because if you're not in it, somebody working to win it. So you'll lose. And I don't like to lose. So I stay in it the whole time. Till I'm out or we win or lose, you got to stay in it. I stay in it. That's just how I operate. I don't know how everybody else operates. One hundred percent. Everybody watching. It, it, bas- you, my mom calling me. I'm sorry. Mom, I'm doing an interview. Oh, okay. Well, real quick, he died. Uh, at the All right, time. my they can hear you. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, I'm gonna call right. you back. All right. All right. And yeah, she um, got passed away who I was or got killed or something. I don't know. She's trying to tell me. I don't even really know um, that I grew up with. Uh, but I don't know. But, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you you have um, – you have everybody who plays basketball watching. You see all the tweets during the games from players and like I know I I I was shit I was doing it the last two years so I I know you see it like players tweeting and like everybody's locked in and watching the game like there's no better feeling than that like as a player you know everybody watching you <clears throat> you got to embrace that like so for me why why would I want to step outside that once I step outside we go back to game one of the regular season which is boring. So I, I I don't need to step outside of it. Like go return to my summer workouts. That's it's a time and a place for that. It ain't right now. So no, nah, I embrace it. I love it. It's, it's nothing like it. Dre, in a series like this where the Mavs are expected to keep taking a lot of threes, how important is it gonna be for you know the Warriors guards to secure chase down those long rebounds? And what does that kind of do to the flow of the game? It's very important. You get those long rebounds, it ignites your transition. So I think it's very important that we come up with those uh, 50-50 balls. Got to come up with those. Um, that's that's going to be a huge part of the game plan. You shoot long shots, the misses will be long. And we know we have to control that, that part of the game. And, you know, with them shooting that many threes, if we do control that part of the game, that plays right into what we want to do, which is run. A couple of questions you, for you, Dre. Uh, you guard, you know, you you matched up with Jalen Brunson, and I, I don't know when you knew that was gonna be, but how much of you like study the matchup and how you defend when you get the assignment, and how much of it is like you've been playing so long, you kind of know a lot of the stuff already in the players. Like, like when does that kick in for you? Um. <clears throat> Guys that I've played a bunch, I don't or have guarded a bunch, I don't really watch much film on. I know what you're trying to get to, and I'm gonna take that away. I haven't guarded him much, so I have to watch film on him. I've watched some, I've continued to watch uh just to try to figure out tendencies and what he likes to get to, try to be a step ahead and take it away. Um but you're right, for most guys in this league, I don't have to. Like I've seen enough, like unless you just miraculously be, miraculously become a different player overnight and have me fooled, kudos to you. And the film I was going to watch wasn't going to show me that anyway if you became somebody different. And if you didn't become somebody different, I know what you're trying to get to. And I don't need to watch much. Jalen Brunson is a little different. I haven't had to guard him much. But for most of these guys, you need to watch a ton of film. Unless you don't watch basketball, I watch a bunch of basketball. I mean, or if you're watching basketball as a fan, which I kind of don't most of the time. Uh, uh, you were talking about like you know everybody's watching, and I remember seven years ago when you were getting to this stage, it was like Barkley. It was like jump shooting teams can't win, and he was like the villain. And then he comes here. Last Chuck finally night, won something, and they. <laughs> and going, Y'all saw that? He won Black Masters. Everybody see that last night? No, oh, y'all are still working. Yeah, Chuck won a Black Masters. He finally won something. Good for Chuck. How, how, what is that like? Now he's your t- 
TV partner and like he's a, this Warriors kind of villain. They were cheering him last night and it began with Charles Barkley hating on y'all and now you're his teammate. What is that like? If I win another championship, that's one more guy added to the, that's one more ring added to the panel that it's not him. And I wouldn't want to see that either. Then you really got to hear about it. So I get it. Like, I understand. I, 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 I can't, I don't know how that feels. I always won. So I don't know how that feels, but I mean, I, I guess I feel the same way. <laughs> Y'all just keep adding rings up here and I got to just sit here and when the playoffs come around, what are you, you going to say? You're going to tell us how to win? <laughs> Not taking that advice from Chuck. So <laughs> what's he going to say? Jay, man, what do you what tell him? I'm gonna get your mama if you keep talking junk to me because y'all won. All right, go ahead, Chuck. Right, two That's more. My dog, though. I, I love Chuck. It's my dog. What What do you see as um, Looney's impact on this series? And do you remember what he was like when he first got here, and how he's different now? I <clears throat> was very frail when he first got here. Um, his impact on the series. And not only this series, it's funny. I was actually just sitting in the back talking to somebody before we watched film and just talking about Looney and, like, how incredible he's been all year. Like, we didn't really have the option of a, of a center outside of him. What did he do? Just played all 82 games. Like, go away from him in a series. What does he do? Just stay ready and deliver the biggest game of his career. Guy's amazing. Uh, one thing I can say about him from when he was young is the same professional he is today. He was when he came in the league. And when you are that professional, that's a skill. Like, professionalism is a skill. And he has it mastered. Like, better than me, better than most guys, he has it mastered. And so, I mean, you, you'd imagine, because I'm talking about professionalism, most people – won't equate it to anything, but like when you call somebody a master at something, like there's no level after that. And like, he's a master when it comes to professionalism. So to see him have the impact that he does on games, it doesn't surprise me ever because he prepares to have that impact. He constantly gives, 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 and gives, and gives to this game. You give, give, give to this game, you're going to have success. I don't know anyone that just gives, gives, give, and they don't have some type of success. So his success is earned, and it's not a surprise at all to those that watch him work on a daily. What do you mean by that, that he gives, gives, gives to the game? He works. He's always doing something. He's doing little things to get his body ready. You know, every, everybody has different bodies. Everybody has different body types. What do you have to do to get your body ready to go? And that's what he and that's what he constantly does day in and day out. And you you just can't say that about as sad as it is, you cannot say that about many people in this league. Draymond, I asked uh, Steve a little bit ago, I said, Hey, is there a is there a template that you can go back to as far as a game plan to a specific player you've played in the playoffs or a team that's similar to this Dallas team as far as a roster construction or a style. Houston. And he mentioned he mentioned Houston in that. And is is that the same answer for you in that? How is what's the similarity differences between that 2018 Houston team, James Harden, Luca, and this team? It's very a lot of similarities. Um, you got one guy who has the ball a lot. And he makes plays for everybody. And he is incredible at doing it. And you have a bunch of guys that can shoot the lights out the ball. And that guy is good enough to find them no matter where he is on the floor, what position he's in, how many people's around him. There's a lot of similarities. Um, yeah. I mean, they've it's they're definitely similar um i think i think luca kind of manages a game like lebron in a sense but the way he plays and the way james played and the way that houston rockets team played it's a lot of similarities great thank you appreciate it. 